Is it possible or practical to 3D print a protective case for an iPad? This question answered on this wonderful 3D Thursday. We've all done it. At one point or another, we've all dropped one of our cool and expensive tech gadgets on a hard surface, often resulting in broken glass. For this reason, most people buy a protective case for their device, a low-cost preventative measure that could save them hundreds later on. While the cost of a decent case is usually cheaper than a screen repair, I still think paying $30 to the store for a piece of plastic is outrageous. You can buy an equally good case online for about half that cost, but why wait when you have a 3D printer? You can download one in seconds and print it in the time it takes to watch a movie. I found a few cool cases on Thingiverse and decided to print one with a cool triangular pattern. Thing number 264792. Since the case is so thin, the infill density probably doesn't matter, but I set it to 50% just in case. Printer setup is pretty straightforward. Painter's tape and a coat of glue applied make for a warp free print. The tape also makes cleanup easier since the glue can accumulate over time if applied directly to the print bed. Since the case is thinner than most prints, it is easy to peel up with the aid of an old credit card. From my experience, cases or objects this thin tend to be incredibly delicate, so caution should be used in the removal process. To install a case, we simply place one half of the iPad in the case, and then press down until the iPad doesn't fit and something breaks. To the scrap bin, we'll come back to this one a little bit. There weren't too many cases for this particular iPad, and I probably have the least popular phone made this year, having bought the BlackBerry Priv, so finding a case for that is unlikely. Let's find a cool accessory for the iPad, perhaps a dock. Let's print thing number 68285. Upon completion of the print, I was delighted to see that the iPad fit like a glove, but disappointed that the base does not accommodate the high center of gravity. I'm going to try to fix this with some kind of wood glue and a thin block of wood. Let's go back to the iPad case for a little bit. So after reading a little bit, I discovered that larger prints will incur noticeable shrinkage, which can affect the performance of measurement specific parts. While some designers accommodate this potential shrinkage in their design, this one did not. I'm going to increase the size by a very small percentage and see how it fits a second time around. Upon test fitting, I can conclude that this design is just too hard to print in ABS. The iPad now fits within the case edges, but it's still too shallow to snap around the device. Unfortunately, this is one variation of the only one-piece design I could find for the iPad Mini, so printing a functioning case for this device is not going to happen on this episode. On a positive note, I was able to make the dock work properly, so let's go back to that for a second. Using recycled piece of pallet wood, I was able to make a sturdy base for the iPad to stay upright. Using a little hot glue, I was able to attach the dock to a piece of wood. It's a cool and functional concept, but I personally think plastic on wood looks weird from an aesthetic standpoint. Before I conclude this episode, I have a few notes about ABS and PLA plastics. 3D printing large precision parts in ABS can be difficult, since ABS tends to shrink at a higher rate than other materials, such as PLA. Printing small precision parts can be difficult with any material because of the printer resolution and the structural limitations of plastic. This case has a little bit of both large overall dimensions with very thin edges. While I still own a few rolls of PLA, I'm hesitant to put this material in my printer since the last few times I switched from ABS back to PLA, I clogged both extruder heads on the printer. While the printer is primarily designed to print with ABS, it is capable of printing in PLA without any modifications, so I'm not sure why it would do this. I have a feeling if I could cleanly extrude this case with PLA, I'd have a better shot of getting accurate dimensions for the case. PLA is also very brittle, so it would not be ideal for something protective like this. From my observations, I'm going to conclude it's currently not practical to print cases for larger devices, but it is entirely possible. As you saw, it is somewhat difficult to adjust for shrinkage, since each attempt takes several hours and consumes material. Some designers accommodate for this, while others don't. Either way, they usually include instructions in their description on how people should set up their printers for the print. And that's where I figured out that I needed to expand the dimensions of the case by a small increment. A number of designs also have thin walls to allow the design to clip over the device bezel. Fortunately, this causes weak points, especially near cutouts for buttons and ports. Despite ABS having more flexibility than some other plastics, these 
points will often crack or break off completely. There are a few flexible materials available for printing, however these materials usually cost about twice as much as ABS and PLA and require additional operating procedures. I would eventually like to try printing with flexible materials, but as with ABS and PLA, I will wait until there are more price competitive options on the market. 3D printing gets better and more affordable every year. I am sure we will revisit this case sometime not too far from now. Be sure to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next week. Be sure to check out last week's episode if you haven't already, and leave some suggestions for future prints in the comments below.